Okay, so to start off chapter 13, we're going to walk it back and kind of do some geometry review. We're going to be talking a lot about trigonometry and kind of some more advanced trigonometry in chapter 13. So um, we might as well start with what we know and what we remember from geometry class. So in a right triangle, uh, our three main trigonometric ratios are the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios. And remember, these are always uh, dealing with a certain angle with a right triangle. So if you recall the sine of an angle, so this little symbol, it's a Greek letter, uh, theta. It's a pretty common one used for angles. Sine of theta is the fraction, the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So it's always that ratio, opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So you maybe are familiar with the little uh, phrase sokotoa to remember those. Sine being opposite over hypotenuse, cosine being adjacent over hypotenuse, toa being opposite over adjacent. I'm going to sort of go on the idea that you have seen this somewhere before. If you need more help with this, um, come find me or, or look it up on YouTube or something. Um, but I'm going off that we kind of remember this. We'll do some practice, but um, my hope is that you've seen this before and have worked with this. Now, for our class, we're actually going to add three more trig ratios that are related to these three. So the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite side. And this is sometimes abbreviated CSC. It's basically uh, the reciprocal of the sine. The cosine would relate to the secant, which is the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. It's just the reciprocal of cosine. And uh, the reciprocal of tangent, we call cotangent, that's adjacent over opposite. Now, essentially, these, you could go from one to the other. Um, it's not super consequential, but sometimes it's just more helpful to have a certain uh, value on bottom or on top. So now you have these at your disposal um, that you can use. And your calculator has buttons for these too. So if we're dealing with this right triangle uh, of sides 5, 12, and a hypotenuse of 13, let's just walk through our trig ratios. Um, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite of theta is 12. The hypotenuse is 13. Cosine is the adjacent, which is the side next to the angle that isn't the hypotenuse. So we'd have uh, 5 over 13. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. So in our case, that'd be 12 over 5. Now, our new stuff, cosecant, is the reciprocal of sine, so that's um, hypotenuse over opposite, so 13 over 12. Secant uh, is the reciprocal of cosine, uh, 13 over 5. And cotangent is just 5 over 12. So those are your six main trigonometric ratios for this particular triangle. So if you're told that cosine of theta is 5 over 6, and you want to find the value of the other five trig functions, so you want to find sine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, um, I recommend just drawing a right triangle. So if we make a right triangle, we call this angle theta. Cosine refers to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, so that's a five, that's a six. And now we want to write sine of theta, uh, tangent theta, uh, cosecant theta, secant theta and ta cotangent theta. What we need is we actually need to find this other leg. So we have to use some other geometric ideas to find the third side of a right triangle. Just use the Pythagorean theorem. So um, 5 squared plus, call it x squared, is 6 squared. 25 plus x squared is 36. So x squared is 11, so x is the square root of 11. And we'll just leave it like that. So that means sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, which is the square root of 11 over 6. The tangent of theta is the square root of 11 over 5. The cosecant of theta, which is the reciprocal of sine of theta, would be 6 over the square root of 11. But we know we don't like leaving things in this form, so we would rationalize the denominator. 6 square roots of 11 over 11. Uh, the secant 
of theta is just the reciprocal of 5 6, so 6 fifths. It's not so bad. And then cotangent, we would have uh, 6 over the square root of 11. What did I do? Did I mess up? Tangent, oh, this is over 5, not 6. Duh. I just can't read my own handwriting. So that's a 5. And then this would be a 5. My bad. Equals rationalize 5 square roots of 11 over 11. Um, let's find the value of x for these two pictures here um, using trig. So if this angle is 62 degrees, we're looking for what the hypotenuse is. We know what one of our legs is. We can label these sides. This is opposite. This is the hypotenuse. This is the adjacent side. So what we did back in geometry is we asked, well, what ratio do we use that uh, has the sides that we have? So the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So we know we're going to have to do cosine. So we would do cosine of theta, or excuse me, of our angle 62 equals adjacent over hypotenuse, 6 over x. And then we can set this up as a proportion, cross multiply, x times the cosine 62 is equal to 6. So x is equal to 6 over cosine 62, which is equal to... Twelve point seven eight. For this problem here, we have this angle of twenty five. This is our opposite side. Uh, this is our hypotenuse. So we'll use sine. Sine of twenty five is equal to x over sixteen. Multiply both sides by sixteen. Sixteen sine of twenty five is equal to x. So we do sixteen times the sine of twenty five and we get 6.76. To solve a triangle means to find all three angles and all three sides. So if we want to solve this triangle, um, we need to find angle A, we need to find side AC, and find side AB. Finding angle A is pretty easy. We know the angle sum of a triangle is 180. So you can just take 180 minus 90 minus 37, you get 53. So the measure of angle A is 53 degrees. Some of you are having probably really good memories back to um, geometry days. If we want to find AC, um, I'll label that with a little b since it's opposite big B. Uh, we could use tangent. So tangent 37 is equal to b over 5. Multiply both sides by 5. 5 tangent 37 is equal to b. Punch that in. We get 3.77. And then to find the measure of our hypotenuse, ab, um, we could use the Pythagorean theorem, or we could use trig again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use trig. So we could do like any of our trig ratios basically, I'll maybe do cosine. So like cosine 37, 37. Equals uh, five over little c. So c is equal to five over cosine 37. We get something like 6.26 for our little c. And that's what it means to solve a triangle. It's just to find all three sides and all three angles. Okay, so before we're done, I want to go over um, our two main special right triangles. So you maybe recall this from geometry as well. Um, in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, where you have 45 degrees, 45 degrees, and 90 degrees, um, the two legs are always the same since they're opposite acute angles. Or by acute, I mean congruent angles. And the hypotenuse, if you run the Pythagorean theorem or you run trig, is always whatever that leg is times the square root of 2. So that means you can do problems like this pretty easily to find x and to find y without doing trig. You know y is 7, and you know x is 7 times the square root of 2. You might have to work a little harder when you have to divide by the square root of 2, but we know that 
to find x, x times the square root of 2 is equal to 5. So x is equal to 5 divided by the square root of 2. So x is 5 square roots of 2 over 2. And then y is the exact same thing. So this is rule number 1 for 45, 45, 90 triangles. Rule number 2 deals with 30, 60, 90 triangles. Um, you maybe have been taught this differently, but how I like to go over this is in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, it's all about what the short leg is. So if you know what the short leg is, call it x, the hypotenuse is always double the short leg, just two times whatever the short leg is. And the long leg is the harder part. You take the short leg times the square root of not three, or not two, but three. So for this problem here, you know the short leg times 2 is the hypotenuse, so that means the short leg would have to be 5, and that means that x has to be 5 times the square root of 3. We'll look at a couple more of these. Uh, here we're told the long leg is 10 times the square root of 3, and we know in general that x times the square root of 3 is equal to 10. So we'll solve that. 10 divided by the square root of 3 which is equal to 10 root 3 over 3 for x. And then to find the hypotenuse, you just double that. So instead of 10 root 3 over 3, we have 20 root 3 over 3. Lastly, this is probably actually our easiest example because we're given the short leg. If the short leg is 4, y is 8, and x has to be 4 times the square root of 3. So that was a lot to unpack. We basically put in... Um, four sections of your geometry class into one lesson. But in theory, everything in here was review. But if you do need more help, uh, there's tons of good resources online or with me um, that deal with right triangle trigonometry.